This is a demonstration of BusinessWorks 6.2, and I'm going to do Hello World. I'm going to just basically start from scratch, uh, empty, empty workspace, create an application, and configure a process, and then run it, and show how that works end to end. So right now, what you're looking at is, is our uh, main workbench, and it's focused on a uh, single workspace. We have a workspace which is stored on the disk in this location. Um, it's a, a folder that contains all of the information about uh, what you're seeing. Uh, you're seeing various views. You know, click on a view and it shows uh, things that are related to that, that view. Uh, you can also click on a view and move it, uh, get it set up to be where you wanted it. If you wanted the, the view to be over here, um, you can move that if you wanted to see it at the same time. So you wanted to see one view while you're looking at another view. Um, you can definitely uh, organize it in, in various ways. If, if for some reason you close a view and now it's gone, you have to uh, show it again. You can find it usually in the menu. Show view uh, shows all of the, the most common views and, and the other the other choice shows all possible views and you can you can find it there if it's not in this other list. So it, it adds it back. Um, so you can you can always show and hide and, and resize the various views. So right now it's it's I've got an empty workspace. So the first thing you want to do is create a project. Uh, there's various ways you can create projects. Uh, the toolbar has has ways of doing that. We have two types of modules: an application module and a shared module. Uh, the application module is the one that, that executes, and the shared module is a way to to uh, combine uh, functions in, in a reusable way across applications. So I, I for the simple test, I'm just going to uh, create an application module. And so what this is going to do is it's going to ask for a name. Uh, I'm going to just call it Hello World. And it's going to store it, again, in my workspace. So it's going to put it right just in the same folder. Uh, the version number, uh, you can leave that alone at, at, at 1.0. The qualifier gets filled in when you uh, deploy an application, and it, it gets a timestamp to make it unique. But, uh, but you can kind of just leave that alone. Um, you can create a process right from this dialog. It's kind of nice. Um, and I'll just call this Hello World Process. And give it a name that, that's, that makes sense for what you're about to do. It's going to create an application. Now, the application project, I'll, I'll explain that when it creates it. But it's going to create two projects, one called Hello World and one called Hello World Application. And if I was doing Java development, I would click this button uh, and it would add Java configuration to your project. But, uh, but I'm not going to do that. That's a different, uh, a different demo. So this is going to create, uh, as I say, two projects, one Hello World and one the Hello World application. The application is really just a container. It, it, you double click here and it contains, uh, it contains the Hello World. So if I had a bunch of other uh, shared modules and things, I, I, I could include those in this application. So, so the application project is, is the container that, that identifies the, the application. It has a name. It has uh, various uh, aspects to it. Um, but, but the main part is it's just a way to, to give a, a single name to a bunch of modules. That's really its main purpose is, is to contain all of the other modules and to point to them. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, you also notice, oh, look, there's, a, there's a, uh, an error marker. So you can see that there's, there's an error. I can, I can show problems, and it shows, oh, it shows that error that the, this Hello World must be implemented. Hmm. So if I let me kind of close these, if you double click on the problem, it, it jumps you to that process, and it's saying, oh, it has to have a process starter. Okay, so I have to have something that starts this process. And there's a couple ways you can do that. So you can use the, uh, the palette. Palette has, has different folders, and then inside of those are the actual activities, and you can go and find the timer that way. Uh, the way I like to do it is, is on the diagram, I just right click, and there's an add activity. And from the add activity, you can go and find the, the activity you want to add. And it just adds it at the place where you right clicked. And so um, it's kind of nice. If you double click on an activity, it will uh, bring up the properties view. For that activity, which is, is kind of nice, because it, uh, it, you know, if, if for some reason you've gone off to some other tab, it's nice to double-click, bring it back, so you can see that the, the timer is going to run just one time, and this is going to start the process. Um, another thing you want to do is, well, I want to add another activity. Uh, again, you can go back to the to the uh, palette and try and find the activity that you wanted, or 
uh, it's easier to, to, to click on this plus, hold the mouse button down, move it around. You'll see as it's moving, it's to show you how the, the, the link's going to work. And again, find the activity. I'm going to do a log activity. And the log is, is going to send some message to a log. And, and really, the, the message that I want to send is just the time. So let me just drag that over here. So it's taking the, the output of the timer, and it's going to just log that to the log. And as I've been working here and making changes, you may have noticed that the, the Save button illuminates whenever you make a change. And when you save, you'll notice that it runs through validation automatically. And, and because I had added that, that starter, now the validation was, was resolved, and it's, it's ready to run. So I've created an app module with a process that's now wrapped inside the application. And I can easily just right-click on the process, and it's going to run all the applications, which right now I only have one in my workspace. It's going to run all the applications. And the, uh, the engine starts locally. And, and then the console will, will appear as the engine starts outputting messages. And one nice thing you can do is you can double-click and maximizes the view. And you'll see now that it, it started the engine. And when it finally ran that uh, process, it, uh, it ran my Hello World uh, log activity, and it printed out the, the time. So end-to-end, -end, creating, creating an application, adding activities to a process, running it. Uh, another thing you can do, it's kind of interesting, is the engine's still running. And, and so if I wanted to come back here to this, this input tab, I can modify it and just say hello world. All right, so I'm going to add the word hello world to the time. Again, you'll notice when I hit the, the enter key, the, the save button illuminated. And if I save it, now what's going to happen is, is there's going to be a notification to the running engine. The engine's still running. The console will pop back up, and it will restart that application. So the hello world application changed, so it restarted it. Now it's got the change, and it uh, it shows hello world there. And so this process can be can be uh, modified as you want. Go through, make as many changes as you want. When you're ready, push save, and it will run. Now there's some issues with that. With with you have uh, problems with the you know validation errors and stuff. That that that's gonna you can work through it. But but for the most part, um, this allows you to, to rapidly iterate and create uh, processes and see how they work and see how your changes are affected uh, right away. And so that's uh, kind of a hello world example, uh, start to finish. Um, and uh, we'll see, uh, we'll expand on this in, in future videos. Thanks.